is going to be our Moses today. <laughs> Can you handle this? Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. Are you nervous? A little bit. Okay. Th this. Okay. They don't. They don't. They don't know what's going on right now. Okay. So just be confident. All right. You got. You got to get into acting mode. Okay. You got to get ready to act. You're Moses. You ready? Mm hmm You got this. Yeah. Let's do it. Look at your neighbor. Say yeah. Okay. 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 So you guys right here in the middle, you guys are going to be the fire, okay? The fire in the burning bush. Make some fire noise. Okay, stop. Come over here, Moses. So, first of all, I know uh, uh, Indy, he, he said he, he wanted some stories on our family dynamic. It's interesting now that my wife and I, we started dating in high school. <laughs> it's been a long, so a lot of you guys are like, well, how did he get her? I tricked her when she was young. <laughs> So look, so look. But it's funny, looking back now, we have three kids. And when we look at the personalities of our kid, my oldest son, Keith, his personality is just like his mother, Linnea. They're real, like, uh, reserved, um, real, you know, straight laced. They talk very proper, right? And so we had Keith, and we were like, man, life is so easy. Why, why don't we have another? And then we had Kai. I didn't know that my daughter was going to turn out to be just like me. And it's funny, it's like, like, it's like my, my daughter and my wife, they, they love to send these TikTok videos to us. And, and, and one of the, the TikTok videos that Kai sent to me, she's like, I, I want to be more like my mom and do the right thing, but I'm just too much like my dad. It's true. It's true. We're twins. And then Camden, Camden, he is like a good mix between me and Linnea. He, he has his savage moments like his father. But then he has his moments when he's real loving and caring and nurturing and he likes to hug and he likes to, to cuddle. So he, he is a good mix. But it's interesting, like, in our family dynamics, just, just how our kids turned out. Well, the one good thing, my wife and I, we have been in, we were in youth ministry for about 17 to 18 years. And now we're in the process of planning our own church. But when I was in a youth ministry, I always got to be around kids and I would learn the new slang, right? Well, with my daughter, my daughter, she's always coming up with this new slang. Like, one moment she's walking in around the house, period, period. This, this morning, this morning, this, this, this morning, uh, her and my wife, they're, they're talking about shoes, and my wife is already dressed, and she was wearing black shoes, and Kai turns around, and she says, oh, you wearing black shoes too, Ma? Naya was like, well, I was dressed first. I said, girls, gr ladies, ch chill out, chill out. Kai says, Dad, not too much. <laughs> If I had to have a title for this sermon today, it would be called Not Too Much. Look at your neighbor and say, Not Too Much. <laughs> say it one more time, Not <laughs> Too Much. Okay, silence, Simon says silence. So Moses, she comes upon this burning bush. Make your noise. She comes upon the burning bush. And God, listen, God is in this burning bush that you hear the, the bush making these noises. God is in this burning bush. And this is actually the first time God speaks in the book of Exodus. This is the first time he begins to speak. So whenever God speaks for the first time, it'll be wise for us to do what? Pay attention to what he says, right? 
So God begins to speak and, and Moses was, was walking with the sheep and, and Moses notices this bush burning. And normally if something is on fire, it would burn up and wither away. But Moses is seeing this miracle happening for the first time. Silence fire. Silence. Okay, silence. Simon says silence. <laughs> okay. So now, check this out. The first thing that God says to Moses is you got to remove your sandals. You're standing on holy ground. Now, I'm not saying you got to take your shoes off, all right? I'm not trying to get us in trouble with Mrs. Pender. She's watching. There's a lot at stake. I might not get invited back. But this is the first thing that God is saying. To and when God is saying something, it might be wise for us to pay attention. See, we always hear how God talks to people. They talk about the grace of God, how the Lord has so much grace. And I'm not saying he doesn't. But you also see that God is saying, wait a minute, Moses, not too much. You, you can't get too close to me. When you come to me, there is this element of respect because I am a holy God. You have to have reverence for me. You can't approach me any kind of way. How many of you guys know that you cannot approach your parents any kind of way? When you talk with your parents, you have to come to them with this element of respect because they are your authority. You view your parents and you know if you get out of pocket, what's going to happen? <laughs> Mom and dad, they're going to turn into Bruce Lee and that's what's going to happen. So you know that when you approach your parents, th there is an element of respect that you have to show them. Case in point, this summer, my son, he was in AAU basketball. And one of the games, we were late taking him to it. And so what, sit tight, Moses, I'm coming back. <laughs> So what happened is, as we're driving, and we're driving to this AAU tournament, uh, Mrs. A is like, well, let's get the kids some food first. We're already running late. So we stop, and we get some McDonald's, and I'll tell you what we ordered, because you're curious, right? Well, it was breakfast time, so not a Happy Meal. You were close, you were close. Is it your favorite? Happy Meal's your favorite? Okay, okay, silence. So I'm going to tell you, we got Kai, she, Kai likes the steak and egg bagel meal. My oldest son, Keith, he likes the, the burrito meal. Me, Mrs. A, myself, and, and Camden, we got big breakfasts. So listen, my wife gives the kids instructions. She says, while daddy is driving, make sure you hold on to your food. What does she say? When daddy is driving, hold, hold on to, whatever you do, you just hold on to it. And the first, listen, listen, let me set it up. So I'm driving and, and, and my big breakfast is on Mrs. A's lap. And, and Camden, Kai, and Keith are in the back seat. Camden has his big breakfast. And we, we just cut up his, his uh, pancakes with the syrup. And he's happy and everybody's, it's a good mood in the car. And, and, and I hit this turn to get on the expressway. And all of a sudden, Camden says, Dad, you made me drop my food. And automatically, Mrs. A turns around, and my food flies off of Mrs. A's lap. And in slow motion, I'm like, no. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, Mrs. A, out of nowhere, she just yells out this scream. Ah! <laughs> of you know in this moment it, 
none of the kids said a word because they they knew that that their mom she, number one they, they respect her and the, the reverence and honor for their, their mom but they knew when she was angry not to even say a word when she was doing that I'm driving have you ever had a moment when it was like you're kind of like looking at someone like but you don't want them to know you're looking at them and, and, but you want to laugh but you, you're too scared to laugh and you, you, you don't know what to that's how we felt but we know that you can't approach your, your parents any kind of way if you have a relationship with God and you don't have that fear that honor that respect for him something is really wrong just like you have honor and respect for your parents because you love them, that same honor and respect is also due to God. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. That same reverence, because God, he is holy. He's a holy, we just can't approach him. And we have to have respect and honor for God. So the first thing he's doing with Moses is he's laying out this foundation of their relationship. Now, in Moses' hand, what do you guys see? Do you notice like the little slits in the staff? Do you notice it? You notice the little cuts in the staff? So in the Bible days, what they would do is when somebody would receive their staff, okay, they would dip it uh, in a solution so it would last a lifetime. And they didn't have like diaries and books like we did. So their, their staffs were just like their diaries. So what would happen is anything in their life, good or bad, would happen. They would take a knife and they would put a slash in the staff to remember it. So let's say, I don't know, they got married. Whoop. Slash. Let's say like David, he fought Goliath. Slash. Anything good and bad in their lives, they will put a slash. So Moses, he's walking around with his staff, his diary, right? And he comes upon God. And he's afraid. And God, listen, listen. Shh. And then in the midst of his fear, God is saying, I hear the cries of my people. I want to send you to set them free. And all of a sudden, what happens with Moses? He starts giving God all these reasons for why he can't go, why he didn't want to do it. He's like, Lord, oh, psh. I'm sure he's looking at his staff in this moment, remembering his things. And God is like, you know what? I'm going to use this staff for my glory. Hey, lay it down. It turns into the state. Once again, God, he's doing all these miracles with this staff. Show him Moses. Look, man, I, I got you. I got you, Moses. Moses, he's still coming up with these reasons why he didn't want to listen to God. He says, well, God, I, I stutter. I'm not, I'm, I'm slow of speech. I don't even speak right. I don't know about you, but normally in the Bible, when when somebody has an issue like the woman with the issue of blood or or somebody's a leper or it's a blind man, the, the Bible would just throw it out there. It, it wouldn't hide that type of stuff from us. So to me, it doesn't make sense. All of a sudden, Moses is saying he stutters. And time and time again, I've heard preachers say, oh, Moses stuttered. But I have such a hard time believing that because it's whole entire time, Moses is talking fine. If you were to look at Acts chapter 7 verse 22, it says, Moses was educated in all the wisdom of Egyptian and was powerful in speech and action. In other words, Stephen is saying that Moses was a man of great speech. 
He's saying that Moses was an epic communicator. Moses was great at speaking. He was really good at it. So what in the world was Moses doing when, when God is saying, I want you to go, and Moses is laying out all these different reasons as to why he can't go? What really and truly is Moses doing? Moses is doing what we do every single day. He was making excuses as to why he didn't want to obey God. We all make excuses every day. Hey, so-and-so, did you complete your AR books for school today? Are you ready to do your testings? What do you say? Excuses, excuses. When mom and dad says, hey, Lauren, how come you didn't clean your room today? What do you say? I forgot. Excuses, excuses. When mom and dad says, hey, did you finish your homework today? Why are you out here playing video games? What do you say? I forgot. Excuses, excuses. Guys, this is something that we do every single day. We always come up with excuses as to why we don't obey God. What time is chapel over? 920? 920? Give Lauren a hand. Okay, have a seat with y'all. Listen to me. All eyes on PK. In this story of Moses, all right, Moses making excuses, Moses just wanting to do what Moses wanted to do. Do you realize that's part of the reason what kept Moses out of the promised land? Disobedience to God. When God said, well, don't strike the rock. And Moses, in his anger, he struck the rock. And he couldn't enter the promise. There, there is consequences for not walking in obedience. And all I'm trying to say right now, in this moment, is if you know that, that this far in your life, you've been doing a lot of making excuses as to why you don't obey your parents, as to why you don't obey in school, as to, uh, to, to why you just don't obey God. We have to repent. We got to call a spade a spade, and we got to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm sorry. Mom and Dad, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. And you got to turn away from it. Last scripture, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 2 says, In the last days, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, and unholy. All these things we can see happening right now in this world. And my thing is, if, you, if God is calling you guys, you guys are at a Christian school, you're learning about God. If you don't obey God and if you make excuses to do what's right, then how can this world look at you and know that there's a God? You understand what I'm saying? We have to lead with our actions. I want everybody to stand. Listen, shh. one key word, obedience. No more excuses as to why you don't do X, Y, and Z. No more excuses at, uh, for why you don't obey God. Just obey. Look at your name and say, just obey. Stretch your hands. Lord, as we get ready to dismiss, I cover these kids up with the blood of Jesus. I pray, God, that they would just obey your word, Father. We see with Moses. All he was doing was just making excuses as to why he wouldn't obey you. I pray, God, that we would stop making excuses as to why we disobey. When we truly repent, you, you say you're sorry, and then you turn away from that behavior. You stop doing it. I pray, God, that these students, that they would turn away from making excuses and walking in disobedience and obey your word. Why? Because we fear you, we have reverence for you, we have honor for you because you're holy. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.